Hello everyone, it's I, a Devin Lionheart. So this is the first time I'm talking on a subject that I really am invested in on Death Battle here on this channel. Now on my previous channel, y'all know I gave some uh, harsh criticisms on Cloud Strife versus Link when it first came out. Um, uh, that's because they didn't do their homework. <laughs> but I, I digress. Um, this is not about that. This is about a death battle I'm fully invested in. Megatron, the leader of the Decepticons, the most famous warrior of the pits of Kaon, the guy that literally started a war that went from Cybertron to Earth against Emperor Frieza of Dragon Ball Universe. You know, the guy that literally just got the black form. And he's got a gold form. And a white form. And then we'll, we'll get into Frieza's, like, thoughts on Frieza in here in a minute. But um, I'm a huge Transformers nerd. And I do love Team Four Stars overall Frieza. I mean, like, I think he does a better job than the actual anime. But uh, that's due to the script writing. Now, so I want to go over what makes this match so just misplaced. First off, we need to talk about what Megatron can do. So we've seen the pre-analysis. In that, we understand he's got his cannon, he's got his uh, oh, flail on a, uh, an energy flail on like a chain, he's got his overall, oh, like, even though it appeared in one episode, buzz saws that launch from the hand, what the frick? So all these can be tied to one version of Megatron, G1. Now, Megatron in this battle, he has the experience, he has knowledge, he has many years compared to Frieza on combat prowess and strategy, let alone cunning manipulation, and even that of just an overall warmongering mindset. That's what Megatron has for him. Now, when the actual death battle goes down and they mention the Dark Energon, let alone the Dark Star Saber. If they had those, I truly believe Megatron may stand a bit of a chance. If you don't know what Dark Energon does, it's basically the power of Unicron. Unicron is the world devourer, and he's the literal dark side of Cybertron. Um, and he he's basically the, um, well, I think Team Four Star put it better. I hope that Zell already puts in the uh, clip of, uh, you know, that one scene from Broly. The devil. Oh my god, he's so goddamn cool! I need to get on that. But if anything, Unicron, the world eater, is basically the underworld's equivalent of a uh, destroyer. Now, Dark Energon is his power source. It's the one thing that keeps him going. And it's the power of the undying. Basically, it allows Megatron to revive dead Cybertronians. You know, ones that lost their spark? Have no life in them? They're in the ground, they're gone, lost and forgotten? But more than that, there is a weapon purely made from the same crystallized energy. This is known as the Dark Star Saber. Now, if you keep up with my Twitter, you obviously see like two of my favorite fictional weapons is Optimus Prime's Ion Rifle and the Starlight Saber. Point taken. The Dark Star Saber, when it was first introduced into Prime, had the power to break the previous Starlight Saber. Literally, shatter it on contact. It took several blows for that to happen, but it happened. Now, do I think they're going to add the Dark Star Saber? No. 
because obviously it would give Megatron the edge he needs, literally in every way, shape, or form, to defeat Frieza. But that's just a minute chance that Megatron could do that with the Dark Star Saber. Now it is proven in Prime that when the Starlight Saber was repaired with the Forge of Solus Prime, you know, the big giant hammer that can only be wielded by a Prime that had the Matrix of Leadership in him, reforged the Broken Blade into a new, more stronger variant, that which that sword broke the Dark Star Saber. Now, I fully believe they're not going to give Megatron this weapon. Or the Dark Energon, because they're avoiding, obviously, Prime fans. That which, I've seen G1, I've seen Beast Wars, um, some of Beast Machines, I've seen that of, obviously, like, a, some of, like, the uh, Japanese animated version of the uh, anime version. I've seen Transformers animated. I've even seen Prime. I've even seen some of Rescue Bots. Uh, I need to erase that out of my brain later. A uh, point is, obviously, Megatron, throughout the several continuities, has had several forms. Now, I want to bring up, what if they decide just to mix all the forms? That means they would not only give the uh, Walter PPK E form, they would need to give the tank form, the ship form, and even the helicopter form, along with the robot mode. Sadly, that would be breaking Transformers continuity. They're not going to do that. But they're going with G1. And I think, like, this is... It's sort of okay, but it's sort of not because it undermines the overall power of Megatron as a whole character. Now, let's take a look at Frieza. Where does he have the advantage in this? Obviously, his advantages are in that of his multiple transformations. Now, let's get into that. So, like, when he's first introduced... He's a smaller version of what you see here on the picture, as um, he is literally hiding his true form, not within a transformation, what I like to think of an equivalent of an anti, -e well, not anti, more like a um, suppressive body suit. It's literally suppressing his power. It's kind of like the reverse thing of Iron Man. You know, Iron Man literally puts armors on to become more powerful. And the more advanced the armor, the more powerful he is. Well, with Frieza, obviously his transformations, the more smaller they are and less intimidating, the more overall weaker he is. It suppresses his power. And these are not transformations. These are just glorified suppressive suits. Now, let's take a look at the second form of Frieza. You know, before the Scott Ridley uh, impression, uh, Predator. Basically, Fre Frieza gets a much more larger body, and his power increases. Now, Team Four Star made the quote, Last time I transformed into this, I clocked at one million. Now, obviously, power levels are the equivalent of, you know, bullshies at the Dragon Ball fandom. But I will mention this. There is some purpose to explain power levels, and if anything, they're highly inaccurate. In that form, I doubt Frieza was at one million. So, yeah. Now you take into that the Scott Ridley form. Basically, the predator alien predator version of Frieza. I'm gonna eat your face. Seriously. Well, I, I, I love that quote from Team Four Star. <laughs> uh, they, they made Frieza really intimidating with that one. But that, yet again, is a less suppressed bodysuit. Now, obviously, the fourth transformation, or the fourth suit, the four Earth form, is literally the true form of Frieza. It's not a transformation, truly. It's more like... A, the other three were suppressive suits, as Frieza just sheds his final suit, uh, basically like your ex-fiance going to a wet, a woman's ex-fiance going to his, you know, 
obviously the uh ex his uh fiance's wedding and wanting to ruin it you want to know the best way you can ruin a wedding to, for your ex fiance or ex wife just rip off the monkey suit and dance around like a goddamn lunatic that's how you do it but point is frieza here he sheds his last you know lim uh limit so limiter suit and he releases his true power in the Frieza saga. Now, if we go in the Dragon Ball Super, you got the gold form. Now, the gold form is on par with Super Saiyan God and just power output, speed, and even that of energy output and defensive. But then you go into Super Saiyan Blue, has a bit of complications at first. Eventually, by the Tournament of Power, Frieza has mastered the golden form where obviously he can rival Super Saiyan Blue. Could he rival Vegeta's Super Saiyan Blue Royal? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, that th th that's that's a that's a big if right there. That is a huge if. But if anything, then you get into the comics or the manga or mangaka for you hardcore fans of Japanese ways. That which I, I'm. I really don't have a problem with hardcore fans a manga or mangaka. Y'all be what y'all want to be. But in the long run, for me, it's just manga. I, I was born in Texas, born and raised in Texas. I call it manga. It's just how it is. Um, Black Form Frieza has literally been memed to the freaking heck. To a point where, obviously, he tries to give off, like, a black person persona. Um... I can literally care less for that meme. But the power output of this form even terrifies the god of destruction himself, Beerus of Universe 7. As Frieza has achieved this form, and he was able to thoroughly trounce Ultra Instinct Goku and freaking, obviously, God of Destruction, Vegeta, literally being fueled by a destruction key. He took on both of these guys, and the guy they were previously fighting, and walloped them so soundly, it was like Saitama walking on a summer day, literally walking across the villain of the week of Power Rangers, and just, you know, taking his finger, his index finger, and his thumb, and flicking him to the side. That's how easy Frieza beat them. That's the point. You see, if, obviously, Frieza has that form, let alone the golden form in the fight, Megatron ain't gonna stand a chance. Now, theoretically, if he still stays in his, like, fourth form, or his original form, the white one here, Megatron may stand a chance, because his cannon may be able to do some decent damage. No, I say May. But as the pre-analysis for Frieza, they went into the golden form. And I think they're going to mention the black form at the overall video, because it's part of the comics. But point is, where Frieza has the advantage is his power, his overall arsenal, Death Ball, Death Blade, Death Disc, Death Bomb, Death Beams, Death Everything. Literally, every one of his attacks has death in it. Real freaking original. Point is, where Frieza dwarfs Megatron is everything else. Speed, power, energy output, defense, and may I dare say, overall, here you go. Because we both know both Megatron and Frieza has huge freaking egos as they're the main villains of their own series. But in the long run, if I have to give an overall feel for, like, who's going to win, I would have to give that of a 72% chance to Frieza. In a literal, believe it or not, I wish it could be more. A 12% of Megatron. Now, there is 
a 6% chance that some shenanigans will go on, such as maybe Starscream will appear and try to sabotage Megatron and fight. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe they end up in a draw. I mean, if they're going with Devil Artemis for the animation, obviously something like that's going to happen. But in the long run, I don't see Megatron, no matter what, winning this battle. As 72% goes to Frieza for the win, just because of his overall capabilities, a 12% chance for Megatron, and a 6% chance of shenanigans going a while. Now, I'm going to be sore if Starscream doesn't overall show up in the animation somewhere and tries to backstab Megatron, only for Frieza just, you know, like to blow up his body. But, I mean, that would be hilarious, but I don't think they're going to do that. If they do, I'm going to be surprised because I, I'm going to react to this, obviously, live on Twitch. And I think I'm going to upload the reaction and record it onto my, uh, my Patreon. Because I don't want to go through YouTube, as obviously there, there's a bit of an issue with copyright with Rooster Teeth. So I'm just going to react to it live on Twitch.tv for all of you. Maybe upload it to my Patreon. I have heard the soundtrack. By the time of this recording, it came out about, like, I think it was, like, how many hours ago? Right! It was about five hours ago, or five or six hours ago, around 12 o'clock last night. Holy crud. And I love the soundtrack. It's so intimidating. You can definitely tell that in the art, Frieza is going to take the W. It's, it's, it's obvious spoilers, okay? Freeze is going to take the win on this one. I fully believe Megatron's going to lose. Simply because Megatron doesn't have the full tools or capabilities to win. So if anything, please enjoy my reaction when it comes out on Twitch.tv slash Commander Devil Lionheart as we're going to watch this live, but I'm not going to upload it on YouTube. Or stream it on YouTube, at least. I have been Commander Devin Lionheart. I hope you can understand how I feel and my full analysis of this. What's your take on this? Who do you think is going to win? Do you think it's going to be Megatron by some mir chance of a miracle? Or do you think it's just going to overall be Frieza? Because I I'm sorry. I am a Transformers fan. And I do like Dragon Ball. But I like Transformers more. But the... Uh, well... The overall leader of the Decepticons may not be the leader anymore. Uh, it's, it's sad. Overall, please like, subscribe, share this video with everyone you know and love. <laughs> Even just random people, because I get to use the help. Because only just 7 or 8% of you people are subscribed. Where there's more than over 92 of you not subscribed to my channel. What the freaking hey? And why have y'all seen top 10 glass cannons and spellcasters and Yu-Gi-Oh? Good lord. What does a guy have to do to get a little recognition around here? Whip his cock out? I'm out. Hey. Uh, why are y'all still here? The... the the show's over. The video's the video's done. Oh, wait a minute. You want more? Well, why don't you click up to the upper right here and, like, see one of my live streams. Or maybe the lower left. Check one of the videos over there. Or maybe just subscribe, you know? I appreciate it. The show's over. Go grab a snack.